Hey brothers and sisters. So I wanted to ask a question today and that question is, how do we know that we are in the season of the rapture? Well, let me first start by defining what I mean by the season of the rapture. Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Now, season here means the measurement of time and the character of the times we live in. This same idea of season is used in Daniel chapter 2, verses 21 through 22, which reads, quote, And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. Now, what could we expect to see in the season of the rapture or which events could cast their shadow upon the church age? Jesus said when describing the signs of the tribulation period in Matthew 24, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. Notice Jesus used the phrase, the beginnings of sorrows. What is the beginnings of sorrows? Verse 4, deception. Verse 6, wars and rumors of wars. Verse 7, nation against nation, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. These are the beginnings of sorrows. So do we see this happening right now? Almost to a T. I believe we are in the season of sorrows. We see many nations threatening war with other nations, many rumors of World War III. We are beginning to see food shortages which will result in famines. Pestilences could fall into the category of the worldwide pandemic and all the variants that are coming out. And of course, with all the volcanoes erupting, we see earthquakes in various places. But Jesus said, See that you are not troubled by any of these signs. The end, speaking of the end of the age, is not yet. The tribulation, the final seven years, is simply casting its shadow on us. Then when the church is removed in the rapture, we can almost pick up at verse 9. Quote, Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. So let's break that down a little further to bring out the true meaning of that verse. Deliver, the word deliver, conveys the basic meaning of to give over from one's hand to someone or something, especially to give over to, over to the power of another. The Greek word was often used in a technical sense for arrest by the police or military, or in Matthew 4.12 it says, taken into custody. Here we see a massive persecution of the Jewish people, and most likely tribulation saints, that will be worldwide after the rapture. The confinement camps, FEMA camps, etc. will start to be utilized, in my opinion. Now let's look at that word, tribulation. Tribulation, from the Greek word which we get thipsis, means to crush, press together, squash, hem in, compress, squeeze in turn, and originally expressed sheer physical pressure on a man. Thipsis is a strong term which does not refer to minor inconveniences, but to real hardships. Weists, or Weists, however you want to say it, Greek translation, New Testament translation, translates tribulation this way. Quote, then they shall deliver you up to affliction. So based on this text, it does not necessarily mean that the seven-year tribulation starts at verse 9. However, we know that the seven-year tribulation will be a time of Jacob's trouble. And when the church is removed, we will see this increase of anti-Semitism worldwide. Let me read for you the context 
from Weist Greek New Testament in Matthew. Quote, then they shall deliver you up to affliction, and they shall kill you, and you shall be hated by all the Gentile nations because of my name. And then many shall begin to distrust and desert those whom they ought to trust and obey, and shall betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and lead many astray. And because of the multiplication of lawlessness, the love of the many shall grow cold. But he who has persevered to the end, this man shall be preserved from destruction. And there shall be proclaimed this good news of the kingdom in the whole empire for a testimony to all the Gentile nations, and then the end shall come. Notice a key in verse 14 of Matthew 24. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. So here we, th here we see the gospel of the kingdom preached instead of the gospel of grace within the church age. So what is the gospel of the kingdom? Warren Worsby says in Revelation 7, we see God will choose and seal 144,000 Jewish evangelists who will carry the kingdom message to the ends of the earth. This verse does not teach that the gospel of God's grace must be spread to every nation today before Jesus can return for his church. It is the Lord's return at the end of the age that is in view here. John Corson says, quote, The greatest explosion of evangelism this world has ever seen will not take place until after we're gone. Revelation 7 tells us that after the rapture, 144,000 Jewish evangelists will be anointed. Moses and perhaps Elijah will come back on the scene, working miracles and calling down fire from heaven. So let's look also at John's incredible vision in Revelation 14. And I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven, having an eternal gospel to preach to those who live on the earth, and to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the springs of water. If one reads John's words literally, it is clear that the angel will preach the gospel of the kingdom in the whole world. If one observes Revelation carefully, it is very clear that there is chronological progression in many of the chapters. And Revelation 14 is inserted at a time which would correspond to the midpoint of the last seven-year period preceding the horrible time of the Great Tribulation. Okay, so tying it all back to the question I first posed, how do we know we are in the season of the rapture? Well, Jesus gave us very clear and distinct signs that would mark the beginnings of sorrows, which could refer to to the end of the church age, and then gives us the signs of the beginnings of Jacob's trouble. What we are seeing is the forecast of the tribulation. It's in the news headlines. Major global leaders are openly talking about their intentions. The problems we are facing now are global in nature. The technology and economic conditions needed are ripe for the tribulation to begin. All that is restraining the Great Reset, the Fourth Kingdom, the Fourth Industrial Revolution, and building back better, as they say, is the church. We are the restrainer that is restraining the Revelation 6 seals from being broken because we must be in heaven watching Jesus break these seals before the tribulation can begin. How exciting is this? Maranatha.